Our least populated state, Wyoming, is an absolutely beautiful place, and while Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks typically get all the love, it's not all they have to offer. On the following stretch of our 4,200 mile road trip across the northwestern and upper midwestern United States, we'd have the opportunity to stop at two often overlooked parks not far out of the way to South Dakota. They both sport different designations, but are nonetheless administered by the National Park Service. The first of these parks is Bighorn Canyon National Recreation Area, sitting on the border between Wyoming and Montana. As a matter of fact, the park boundaries are in each day almost to an equal measure. Even though all the overlooks we visited at Bighorn Canyon are on the Montana side, since you enter through Wyoming, I think the video title, Visiting Underrated Wyoming NPS Sites, still makes sense. The other park we'd be visiting is Devil's Tower National Monument, located in northeastern Wyoming, not far from the South Dakota and Montana borders. It's technically situated within the Black Hills, which is a very scenic forested area, primarily in South Dakota, but also partially in Wyoming. In the next video, I'll actually have an entire video guide devoted to the most popular spots within the Black Hills, and I highly recommend checking it out. Now, our original plan today was to hit both of these parks in the same day, but we'd have a little bit of an obstacle that would prohibit this from happening. When navigating to certain parks on Google Maps, it's important to remember that they don't factor in non-paved roads. They simply provide the shortest route to your destination. Even if it took you on a super rocky road, thousands of feet high with steep cliff drop-offs on either side and only wide enough to fit one vehicle, you wouldn't be notified. Fortunately, things like this aren't usually the case, and the fastest routes tend to be ones utilizing paved roads. But today, visiting Bighorn Canyon from the West would prove to be quite dangerous for our low clearance Tesla rental. Please, if you're visiting, factor in a stop in Lovell, Wyoming to set your navigation straight. From there, you'll head north to Bighorn Canyon and you shouldn't run into any trouble. Before we knew this, we had been on a relatively tame, non-paved road for several miles north of the town of Coley and we were approaching the convergence point with the paved entrance road to Bighorn Canyon. But out of nowhere, the road started to get really muddy and before we could consider heading back the way we came, our car got stuck. Fortunately, we had pretty good service, so we were able to call a company that would be able to send a vehicle to winch us out of the mud. But the whole time we were waiting, I was holding out hope that there would be people off-roading that would notice us and get us out so that we'd be able to save a pretty penny. The first group that came by got out to help, but they weren't able to do a whole lot since they didn't have the proper equipment necessary. But the second group that saw us stuck was carrying a shovel, so they were able to dig up some dirt under the tires and push us out successfully. After waiting over an hour and a half, we really appreciated that there were some friendly folks able to help us out, and it meant that the day wasn't completely a bust. Though we'd no longer have time to make it to Devil's Tower in the same day, we would get to see Bighorn Canyon and partake on a really awesome drive through the Bighorn National Forest to get to the eastern side of Wyoming. Now, understanding a National Recreation Area's designation is really quite simple in this case. It's a place that has a plethora of recreational opportunities, of course. At Bighorn Canyon, one of the most popular options is boating out on the Bighorn River, which snakes its way through the canyon walls. This also seemed to be quite common at the other National Recreation Areas I've been to, which include Lake Mead in Nevada and Delaware Water Gap in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. As far as hiking and overlooks, Bighorn Canyon doesn't exactly have that much to offer, which is why this was never meant to occupy our entire day. The best view of the canyon, though, had to be from the Devil's Canyon Overlook. The canyon walls are over a thousand feet tall at this point, and you can look into the canyon in both directions. You'll notice that the watercolor was a brown today due to a significant amount of rain and a flood watch that took place last night. Locals were telling us that the entrance roads were actually closed for a little while before our visit, and you can certainly see why with how high the water levels were. But nonetheless, this was an absolutely beautiful overlook, and the fact that it requires no hiking and is easily accessible makes it a must-visit location in the park. Right nearby to the Devil's Canyon Overlook is a short hiking trail that provides similar views that feel more exposed due to a lack of railing. This is called the Sullivan's Knob Trail and is a 0.8 mile loop with 157 feet of elevation gain. This was definitely a pretty easy trail but a pleasant one for sure. It's interesting walking through the desert surroundings but then looking back and seeing towering mountains which we were going to hike into a little bit but unfortunately it wouldn't be possible with the non-paved access roads to the trailhead being inaccessible. But I was just glad we got to see Bighorn Canyon in all of its glory since there were a variety of factors challenging our visit in the first place. One of the coolest things about driving through this place is on Google Maps, it's just a squiggly line. The river, it's so cool. But anyways, it would now be time to drive to Eastern Wyoming, and on the way, we'd have an unexpectedly incredible drive through the Bighorn National Forest. Since I was so busy taking in the sights and sounds, I didn't really get a whole lot of video footage, but if you ever get the chance to drive on by, or perhaps you're inspired by this video and want to visit both Bighorn Canyon and Devil's Tower, well then definitely check it out. And hopefully at some point we can come back and do some hikes here. That would certainly be pretty cool. Onwards to Devil's Tower National Monument, a spot that really exceeded my expectations. Now, when we arrived here the following morning, the fog and visibility levels were very very high, which made me worried we wouldn't be able to see the namesake of the park. All right, guys, we just got to Devil's Tower National Monument. And take a look at this. We're right next to the tower. If you look up, you cannot see a thing because it is so 
misty and you cannot see it. There should be a giant tower right there. So we're gonna wait it out. Hopefully it clears up a little bit. But after arriving and walking the 1.7 mile loop around Devil's Tower, we had an incredible stroke of luck and the tower started to reveal itself. So what is it and where did it come from? Well, Devil's Tower is a butte composed of igneous rock. The basalt making up the tower are some of the most impressive I've ever seen. Like all other basalt, it forms when fast flowing lava cools rapidly on the Earth's surface. Though this particular formation is such a unique and impressive case of igneous rock that it was established as the first national monument in 1906. The views you get making your way around the trail which circles the perimeter of the tower are absolutely spectacular. Not only of Devil's Tower itself, but another thing about the park that surprised me were the views you get looking out over the Black Hills. It's really beautiful in this area, and the moody atmosphere caused by the fog the first lap around felt quite magical. Another feature of the park I was thrilled about was the Prairie Dog Town. These are areas where prairie dogs dig up holes and create their own underground maze. Prairie dogs are so amazing because they dig up these holes and they have this whole like underground network and they just pop up everywhere. Not to mention the amazing view of Devil's Tower. This is a can't miss. This would be the first time my brother and I ever saw a prairie dog, and as we'd soon find out, they're very common in the Dakota, so we'd definitely be seeing them again. Here you can see where they are in the United States. So we're here in this corner right on the South Dakota border. <laughs> but overall, Devil's Tower National Monument was one that I enjoyed a lot more than I expected. The scenery around the tower was breathtaking, the wildlife was special, and of course, Devil's Tower itself was very impressive. Honestly, a lot taller than I was expecting. Even though the tower itself is only 867 feet from its base to its summit, of course, I say only with a grain of salt, it's located on top of its own mountain, contributing to its impressive 5,100 foot height above sea level. If you ever get the chance to visit either of these underrated Wyoming parks, and especially this one, I'd certainly recommend. With that being said, that's going to do it for the fourth installation of this road trip series. As I said, the next episode will take place in the Black Hills National Forest of South Dakota. This will be featuring all of its most iconic spots, including Mount Rushmore, Wind Cave National Park, Custer State Park, and Spearfish Canyon. Until then, I'll see you all very soon. Bye guys.